Good afternoon everybody, it's me again Ernie. I'm going to do a review of a triple set of films. They've all been made, they're all the same virtually. So I'm going to go through them. It's a trilogy that I, two of them I like, one of them I love and the other one I can't stand. I just think it's rubbish, total rubbish. So I'm going to be reviewing for all my friends out there in the film world, especially Daniel Orton, Armchair Directors, Danny Callahan, Paul Gibson Wade, my partner Richard, um, Chris Conley, and all my other friends who watch my videos, and Mike Burns, everyone else. I hope you like them, and I'd love you to comment on the videos that I do, and also I'd like you to give us your you can either write it or send a video or share it. Share this video as well of your favourite horror film from the 80s. So give us a comment down below when I put it on Facebook or YouTube. So that's your favourite horror film that has a special place here from the 80s. Now I'm going to start off with number one of this trilogy of DVD reviews, Blu-rays. And they're all the same film virtually. So I'm going to do each one individually. The very first one I'm going to talk about is... The 1950s classic Thing from Another World, the Howard Hawks original. There we go, and there's a back cover. Pretty smart, it is too. Now, it's a black and white classic. It's based on a novel by J.W. Campbell called Who Goes There? Now, it's loosely based on the book. It's about a group of scientists who go to Antarctica. And while they're there, they unearth a spaceship that's been buried in the ice for millions of years. And it's people said it was propaganda in them days, the film, because of it's near the Cold War and everything, and aliens were going to invade Earth and everything. It's not, it's not, it's a black and white film. It's a man in a rubber suit running around Antarctica. The film basically is about an alien that can imitate life perfectly. Any life at all that it touches, a blood cell, anything, it can become that person. So you never know who's going to be who. This is the original, as I said, the Howard Hawks black and white classic. Now, the remake, which we'll talk about later on, was done by a master called John Carpenter. Now, in the film Halloween in the 70s, when the little girl is watching television with her friend Tommy, the phone rings and the TV, they're watching a thing from another world, which is this. Now, as a film, I'd give it 8 out of 10. It's a classic, old school, brilliant film. So that's The Thing From Another World. If you like old sci-fi and B-movies, it's a good one. Right, we're coming up to the second one, which is a prequel, right? Or they call it a prelude to the remake, which was done in 82, which we'll talk about later on. Now, this is the worst one of all of them. When I first heard they were redoing it or remaking it or pre-making it or making a version of it, I had high hopes because it was from the same people who did Dawn of the Dead, the remake, Zack Snyder's team. And the remake of Dawn of the Dead is fantastic. The original is brilliant, but that's a brilliant, brilliant, great film, the remake. This one is The Thing. It was made about two years ago, three years ago. And it was a prelude, as I said, that's what they're calling it. Because in the John Carpenter version, they're a group of scientists like the ones in the black and white. But in this one, it's the Norwegian camp that they go and visit. Because in the in the 82 version, Kurt Russell's character, John McCready, and the doc fly over to Norway's camp in the Antarctic and find everybody dead. As everyone knows. So, this is going back to that time when the Norwegians first discovered the spaceship. It had potential to be a great film, it really did. But one word spoilt the whole bloody mess and that is CGI. Shit. Absolute bobbins. In the original Norway camp, in the 82 version, when they go and search everywhere, 
every person in the Norway camp is a male and they're all dead right they've all been killed or whatever committed suicide because of this thing so in this one they've got a lady I suppose you have to keep up with trends and put a woman there and everything and she's basically the female version of the Kurt Russell character in the H2 version and it was supposed to be suspenseful scary and everything didn't do it for me absolute turd no wonder it flopped at the box office the only connection this has got with the thing is the ending which has the dog which is in the beginning of the original one but if you like watching cgi you'll enjoy this i didn't i'd give it three out of ten and i'm being kind i won't give a zero I never will for anything because there's some merit in something that's a three out of ten if you want to watch it go for it now we come to the best one the ultimate the fantastic amazing 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 film the best horror film of the 80s absolutely amazing we're talking obviously about john carpenter's the thing which is the best best special effects movie ever made i'm talking proper special effects no cgi no green screen no crap proper prosthetics makeup people who spend weeks and hours and days and months preparing the most grotesque horrible mutations you've ever seen on celluloid and it's never been bettered anywhere don't care how much cgi you can throw at it it's never been better this story is virtually the same as the others. A group of scientists in Antarctica, led by Kurt Russell, who plays John McCready, the car pilot. It's got Richard Basehart. It's also got Wilfred Brimley. Keith David, who plays Charles, who's fantastic in this. And it's a screenplay. It's by Bill Lancaster. A little trivia for you. Bill Lancaster is the son of Burt Lancaster. And when they made this, and it didn't really do that good at the box office because of E.T., they were, John Carpenter and Bill Lancaster were working on a script and were going to direct Firestarter by Stephen King. But because the thing at the time didn't make money, they were basically not allowed to do the job. So it never happened. Now, another funny thing about this film is... The whole of the cast, the crew, the people who worked on it, the producers, everybody were all male. There was not one single female employed on this job, which caused a bit of ruckus in Hollywood in the early 80s because they said they were being sexist and everything. But no, they weren't. It was just the job had to be done and these were the guys that were going to do it. Now, the film, as everyone knows, is set in Antarctica and the scientists on Earth spaceship which has an alien inside which gets out the alien can imitate life imitate everyone it touches by blood or anything and the idea is you don't know who to trust you don't know who to trust because anybody could be the thing because it imitates them perfectly but in order to show how it does it it's very 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 gory there's a lot of blood in it there's a lot of shape shifting it's brilliant it's atmospheric it's frightening it's dark it's scary these corridors at night the music's by Ennio Morricone who does a fantastic synth score now John Carpenter normally scores all his movies does all the music himself this is probably the only one or one or two that he has never scored which is very strange but Ennio Morricone nailed it the score is fantastic. The acting's brilliant. There's a few surprises. There's a few giggles in it, which are not supposed to be, but you can't help but laugh. And if you want a great film, if you want a scary, scary movie to really enjoy your night, a few beers, lads round, put on John Carpenter's The Thing, I promise you, you won't be disappointed. 10 out of 10, all round, brilliant, brilliant 80s movie. One of the best horror films ever made, in my personal opinion. The man is a legend. Kurt Russell, brilliant. Absolutely great film. So 10 out of 10, fantastic film. 
hope you enjoyed my little review on all three of them so thanks for watching leave your comments below i'd love to hear what you think about horror films in the 80s and stuff and i'll see you soon and quickly before i go i watched that film as well at seven o'clock on a sunday morning in the abc deansgate in manchester which is now called the moon under the water a witherspoons pub and it was in 70 millimeter full surround sound and believe me when you've seen it on a huge massive screen you know it is an experience see y'all soon bye